Happy Father's Day to all the kings right now about to get prepared to watch this video. This celebration is for you. I know sometimes we're not celebrating our community. I know sometimes we're not celebrating on the news or anything else like that. They look at it as another day. Just remember this right here. You are a father 365, not just on one day. To all the kings watching this video, don't have any kids biologically. I'm here to tell you, you're still welcome in the kingdom with us. Just because... They are not biologically your kids. They still look at you like a father. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being that coach, that mentor, and doing so many other things where the other king couldn't pick up the mantle and be there for their child. So celebrate with us today. Stay tuned. I have a special guest for you right now. This special guest is going to be amazing. Stay tuned. Get ready. Put in your seatbelt. Let's go. How doing today, man? As you know, it's Kyle Jacko checking in from the ATL. But this right here is about to be a very special, very special video for y'all. This is the Father's Day edition of the King Series Chapter 3. This Father's Day edition is going to be real great because as y'all know, I'm a father. I have six amazing kids. I love being a father. I love doing everything. This video right here is dedicated to all the fathers in the world. It doesn't mean that you have your own biological kids. You could be having stepkids. You don't have no kids of your own, but you are a father because somebody looks up to you as a father. So before we get ready to get started, shout out to all the fathers out there. Happy Father's Day to y'all. I hope you're having a blessed, amazing day. Remember, man, eat all you can eat. And remember, you still got to go to the gym tomorrow. Though. Don't forget, you still got to go to the gym no matter what the kids give you. You still got to go to the gym no matter what. This right here is going to be an honor to bring this king up here right now. This king right here, I've been seeing him on Instagram. When it comes to just everything with his art, I love everything. You watch me on Instagram, you see me actually post a lot of his art. I was actually able to get into one of his lives one day. Got into his lives, have a real amazing time doing it because just seeing how he puts stuff together and he's doing it for us. If y'all watch this video, when I say for us, I mean for us. He do it for us, man, and he does so much great things, man. It's an honor and a pleasure to have this king doing this Father's Day edition of the King Theory Chapter 3. So I'm not even going to get long with I'm going to get a microphone here. King Troops, come to the stage right quick, man, and tell everybody who you are. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, I appreciate the introduction and uh, I really appreciate what it is you're doing, young brother um, and father. Um, I think uh, it's very important that we have this voice, extremely important that we have this voice. And I think with all the negativities um, with social media, you are doing something that I believe is excellent. And this is truly one of the ways I think uh, social media should be used to reach a worldwide audience that um, highlights who we truly are and not the negativity that uh, all this uh, um, social media uh, morons wanna put on social media that shows us in such a, a poor light, you know? So, and I say morons in the highest sense because I think that's exactly what they are. You know, I'm gonna call it the way I see it. You know, so I thank you. I thank you for having me here. Okay, Mr. Toops, they don't know who you are, Mr. Toops. You gotta let them know who you are, though. Let them know how long you've been doing what you've been doing, what you do, because like they don't know you at all. But it's an honor to have you on, Mr. Toops. So let them know how long you've been doing what you've been doing and what you do. Cause I can know they can see from the background what you do, but they probably don't know what you do. Well, first of all, I'm a human being. And um, this human being is a vessel. That's the way I look at myself as. I, I think I'm a vessel of our ancestors that may not have gotten the opportunity to create such as I do. And so I tell you this, and I use the word create because in our, in our world, I'm considered an artist. Um, so that's what I, I mean, my first thoughts as a child was one that I love my, my, my parents, I love my family. And I believe my second thought, greatest thought, was when I figured out what creativity was in an artistic voice, that I, that's what I wanted to be, was an artist. And so I've strived since uh, those two memories um, to be what I am today, which is an artist. And I've been doing this, creating art my entire life, because my, my 
my memory goes back to, you know, just creating things as a child and watching my mother create and um, her understanding and nurturing me and, and allow me to find my creative voice. Um, so, I mean, I've gone to some of the greatest, you know, institutions you can. I mean, I have a master's degree from Claremont Grad Graduate University. Um, I mean, and that was, that was important for me. I mentioned that not to say that I went to school to be an artist, because in all honesty, I don't believe a school can teach you how to be an artist. What I went to school for was to have a conversation with the multitudes on how to write, how to theorize, how to understand what I am, how to document my history, how to place myself in history as an artist. And it's important I say that because I don't want anyone else to write my history. Because as a black artist, there is not a lot written about who we are in the artist's word. Someone else is always documenting their history. So I have work that dates back from the third grade that I can document, that I have these pieces in my physical presence. So that's how important being an artist is to me. So I've been creating professionally as an artist for over 40 years, um, diligently. And that's all I do. I don't, uh, I don't have another job per se. I mean, this is my job. You know, this is, this is who I am, what I am, and this is how I want to be remembered. Uh, when I'm no longer here is what I created as an artist, as a human being. I love that. If y'all don't know who this man is, and you wonder right now, like, Jacko is interviewing somebody, I don't know who he is, this, that, and other. Go look at the description below. And once you look at the description below, I need you to go to them hyperlinks and see why he has to be on the father there. This He told you he's been creating for 40 years. I'm 35 years old. So basically, this man has been creating since before I was even born into this world. Yes, this right here is about to be an amazing King series. I promise you it is. And all that I got to say is, once again, before we jump to the next question, thank you, Mr. Chooks. Me and Mr. Chooks had a conversation before we even done this video, and I told him that as a little kid growing up in Texas, I didn't know what art was until I got to the age of 30. Like, I got to the age of 30, and then I started understanding what art is, and that's when I start seeing this stuff on Instagram. See, y'all don't know this king, but this king is supposed to be on there last year. He's supposed to be on there last year, but I'm glad he's on there this year because the last year it wasn't like a Father's Day edition of the King series like that, but this year is the Father's Day edition, man. It's an honor to have him on because watching everything he does, like y'all hear me all the time, I ain't have a father growing up, but seeing the art and seeing what everything is, seeing how he does everything, I can have more images in my head of how the father I'm going to be to my kids. Because like I told Mr. Chooks, my daughters and my sons look at what I show them on Instagram and they love it. They say it's cool. My kids say cool for everything. And I know I'm breaking a generational curse because my kids are seeing something that I couldn't see growing up. So Mr. Chooks, I want to tell you again, thank you for being a part of this Father's Day thing for the King series. Really do appreciate it. My next question to you is, how do you think men slash fathers are perceived right now in the world right now? Give me a good one and give me a bad one. Well, I would hope that uh, they are perceived good. I mean, that would be my first instinct to answer that question. However, because of the negative portrayal um, that is written and viewed, um, there's a selected uh, number of fathers that are focused on. And that selected number may be seen in a positive light. And then there's another section of fathers that are seen. And that is usually seen in another light. Now, I'll leave it up to the audience to decide what section of artists or uh, fathers that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking of. Because I think if you have any understanding of how media works and who's running media, then you'll understand why I gave you that, uh, that, that answer. 
um, because I can't target any selected um, group of, of fathers. I can only speak about who I am and my influences as a father and how my father has influenced me and other fathers have influenced me. And I will say uh, when I answer that question that I have an incredible father. My father is 88 years old now. He's going through some health issues right now. Um, he lost a leg uh, and that's been um, a different thing for him. But I told him, I said, dad, you, you, you still just as cool as you were when you had another leg, man. So, and he laughed, you know, he's like, I am. I said, I said you're even cooler now, dad, because you, you got your limp now, you know, so you were all right, you know, so. Um, and he's been an he's been an uh, an amazing influence on me and my brothers. And he's married to my mother. They've been married over sixty years now. Um, so, um, I mean, if that's not it's not it hasn't been a great you know it's um, marriage I would say because um, everybody wants you to say something perfect, but there nothing is perfect in, in anything in life. So I'm just, again, I'm being real with you, but they, whatever issues that there have been in that marriage, they've gotten through them. They figured out a way to make it work. And that influences myself and my wife. I've been married for um, 20 years now to my wife. Um, and I mean, we've had some, you know, struggles, not with us per se, but with just issues in the family um, uh, that we have to deal with. So we are being looked at. They're always looking at what we are doing. And so we have to send a guiding light. So I want to put myself in, in that um, category of being, again, that positive father where I'm showing some positive light on who I am as a Black male and how I deal um, and maneuver my way around um, how society views us uh, in an individual manner. I love that. Mr. Chu, you touched on so many different gems. One thing, man, shout out to your father. Shout out to him, because he is a cool, I don't know your, I haven't never met your father, but he's a cool person to work because like you say, now he got a look. So it's cool. And I love what you just said. We was basically saying like, they went through those down, but they still stayed together. Let this right here be a message to anybody watching this video. Right now that's engaged or your boyfriend and girlfriend and everything else like, let what he just told you be that lesson. You don't give up, you keep on going. Everything is not gonna always be 100% just good. It's not gonna be a golden brick road when you walk outside it. Y'all gonna get through ups and downs. You're gonna get through them, but are y'all willing to stay connected? When you're willing to stay connected, that's what happens. I mean, the two to your wife, man, salute to y'all, 20 years. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that right there is amazing. My auntie and uncle, um, shout out to my auntie and uncle, Carol Mac, Mac Zero and my uncle, um, Big Mac. Um, they've been married for 35 years. They've been married as long as I've been alive. Like, I'm 35. They've been married that long. And I always remember that through everything in my life, with my auntie and uncle, the good times, the bad times, no matter what, they was always like this. They always stayed together because to them, they was best friends before they even got married. They they've been together. They've been together since middle school, high school. They've been together with my uncle when he joined the military. He was always with my auntie. Always been the whole time he growing up. I don't remember nobody else except Uncle Big Mac. That's it. Like I go to put out the text right now and say, what Big Mac said. They're gonna say he stays over there, but you probably don't need to go over there after dark. My uncle's a Marine. So Shouts out to your dad. Shouts out to you in marriage. And just let everybody know watching this video. I have never been married before, but I know it's coming for me. And to all the kings and the queens that's married right now, no matter good or bad, hey, I'm trying to get to y'all status. I'm trying to get to that 10, 20, 30, 50, not that fact, even five year status. So, man, shouts out to all y'all. Mr. Chooks, this next video, I know a lot of fathers right now, they're going to they gonna love this question. Because I know you have a little, you have a daughter yourself. What were your thoughts after you first became a father? I had to grow up. But let me say this: I could still be a kid. 
You know, and I say that because being a single father, I had to, with a, with a girl, a little girl who looks up to you, um, you know, you, 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 gotta, you gotta play tea with your, your daughter, you know? You gotta play with toys and dolls and stuff with your daughter, you know? You gotta, you, can't, you gotta break down that whole masculinity nonsense barrier that society puts on males that you can't do these things with your child. You know, you, you gotta throw all that stuff out the way because you have to, you can't look at yourself. You gotta understand your child doesn't know all that nonsense, you know, that the, the, the society and the media and whatever puts, they put on you. You know, they don't, they don't understand that. So you have to break away from that and, and enjoy that time with your child because you, you're not gonna get it back. You have, to, you have to enjoy that time. I mean, and, but at the same time, your, your child is watching you. She's watching everything you do, everything. And even though that she may not be able to communicate it, those are memories that they don't forget. You know, I mean, so if you're out there doing crazy stuff, they're gonna see you doing that crazy stuff. But if you're out there trying to accomplish something, they're gonna watch you do that too. And so when my daughter was, she was with me, she saw me from the very beginning of being this athlete because that's what she first saw me doing. I mean, when I was going to college, when I had her, um, I was training for the Olympics and I would have to bring her to the track meets with me and all that stuff. And she saw that. She didn't really, understand what I was doing as an artist, but when I did bring her into that world, she was there with me. And I mean, to this day, you know, my daughter's 40 years old. And to this day, she, people ask me, this is, how's your daughter? How's your daughter? How's your daughter doing? And they remember when she was this little girl, because I would bring her to the, the galleries and museums. And every time I was showing, she was always there with me, you know, and it was beautiful. So you know, I say to your, your fathers that have those memories, have those memories, have those memories, let them watch you become what you become. So now my daughter sees, wow, when my dad was struggling and he was going through all of this, that and the other, he never gave up. He continued doing what he was, he was doing. And she actually becomes my history now because she watched me excel and then at the same time I'm watching my daughter go through her life as well so it's an exchange and so that influence is incredible if you tap into that because I learned more from my daughter probably watching her and raising her than she she probably learned from me you know because you have to learn how to be compassionate you have to not be selfish um, I mean, you got to do things that you just would not imagine that you're going to have to do, you know, but you have to do them, you know, and so, and it's a life's lesson. It was beautiful. I love that because as you were talking, um, <clears throat> I remember with um, my little girl, we don't talk about Madison, you know, I got a lot of kids, me and you talked about that, <laughs> but if my first little girl named Madison, um, I'll never forget um, Madison coming home and you know, then her mom didn't really do hair like that. So I had to learn how to do hair. So I had to look at YouTube and see how to do stuff. And I remember that uh, my little girl, she had have a head full of hair. And I started looking at YouTube and I started looking at it like, man, I can't let my little girl go outside like anything. And when I started looking at YouTube, that wasn't working. So what I did was I had braids. So I remember I took a comb. And when I took the comb, I looked at Madison. I was like, you ready? Madison was like, she was a little baby. She was like, <laughs> but she she looked like that and I remember I parted her hair I did it like that as soon as I parted it and I had like the little bobos I didn't know how to use bobos at first so I was like you know I do it the same way I do rubber band so I parted her hair then everything else like that so I put it in the bobos I put it on the side she had one part down her head with two little bobos and when I say my daughter was the most happiest little girl in the world her uh -huh. mama came home and her mom tried to like take down her hair. Madison, she threw a hissy fit. She was like, mm -mm, nope, 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 nope. And it's just an amazing thing because I know what I'm building right now, 
I'm building a legacy for my kids. Like my kids have saw me start doing these YouTube videos. When it came to the street life, my kids, I always kept my kids away from it. Whenever I had to do everything I had to do, I made sure my kids were away from it. But the older they got, they start seeing everything change. Like the voice started changing. Then the hands just started, I started getting impactful with my words when I talk. So my daughter's like, when they see me doing the YouTube video and they right there watching me do it, and I'll be like, say his name, God. My daughter be like, that ain't gonna do nothing. That ain't gonna do nothing at all. My daughters look at me seeing me do it. They be like, Daddy, you know you don't care, it's right. And they little, they was little saying that. So the older they get, they start seeing the passion and the power and everything come to it. So when they go to school and they speak to their friends at school, they were like, My dad is gonna be one of the most amazing motivational speakers. My dad is an amazing life coach. My dad is getting ready to go to seminary school. My dad, he is like, they look at me as a superhero. But they also saw it when I was Clark Kent. They saw it when I was Clark Kent. And now they see me being Superman. So me getting ready to go to seminary school and doing a lot of great things, it's an honor to just know that they're going to see everything and just hear what you had to say about your daughter, watching you, knowing that I'm building legacy with my kids, with my little boy, my two little boys and my little girl. I'm building legacy that can never be broken because I'm not stopping. So... I really, truly love when you shared that memory. And I was saying, when you were sharing that memory, and you talk about bringing your daughter to the track meets and everything else like that, it just took me back to me doing Madison hair in the bathroom. And I just remember when I grabbed that comb and I told Madison, you ready? I'm telling you the truth. My daughter looked at me like this. And she was, she was a little bitty baby because she was sitting right on the countertop. She was like, nah. But when she got done with it, she loved it so much. And they still love getting their hair done today. So before we get to go to the next question, Shouts out Amir, Jacko, Madison Jacko, Taylor Jacko, Olivia, Nalani, and DJ, man. That is doing this for y'all, man. So this is the Father's Day edition. Thank y'all for making me a better man. Mr. Chooks, your next question. On this blueprint, we had a king on here that I want everybody to watch. His name was Eddie Ray Brown. King, King chapter 1, series 15. He looked at you just like this. Mr. Chooks. I would love you to tell the audience right now what you loved about the video and why they still watch this video, Mr. Chooks. Well, here you are talking to a man who's dying and who knows he's dying. And never once did I see him ask for or want pity. He was still giving wisdom he was still trying to reach a larger audience. He still had love. He didn't have any bitterness. He didn't say, God, why are you giving me cancer? You know, why don't you give it to someone else? He says, I want to get up in the morning with zest. I can't wait to get up and get my day started. Now, if that's not powerful, I don't know what is. And we live in such a selfish world nowadays where people just so stuck on themselves. And if they came across, I had to deal with what that brother's doing. A lot of folks, and I'm just telling you straight, couldn't handle it. I mean, they just straight up take themselves out. And that brother, that thought never came across his mind, never in this, what he was saying, you know? So I'm like, that's empowerment. That's the self understanding of who he is and what his place is on this planet. And I believe that's where we have to go as individuals because we cannot just look at ourselves. He was concerned about his legacy and how he wants to be remembered. I'm certainly concerned about my legacy and how I want to be remembered. It is very important. That's when I talked about why I went to school. I didn't go to school to become a better artist because my instructors and my teachers we couldn't teach me that. A lot of them told me, said, hey, Chooks, we're not gonna be able to teach you this because you're way more proficient than we are. So I said, well, what you can teach me is how to document. And I think that's what the brother you was talking to, Eddie, Ed was talking about. That's what I think his, his his heart was, his mind was, I mean, running his barber shop. You know, I mean, I don't go to barber shops, but I'll tell you this, I lived in a barber shop, basically. 
a beauty salon because my cousin um, did hair and I lived with her. And I heard so many conversations in there. It's like history walking in and out of that door because she had so many eclectic individuals walking in and out of there. So it was, it was a great place to learn. I got a lot, I learned a lot about art by watching her do hair. Uh, and I incorporated a lot of that work inside of what I've done um, with a lot of my sculptures. So in saying that, I think the voice of Ed, I think he did that. I think he was giving you, I think he was teaching. I think he was teaching. Um, I could tell his place was a place of learning. It wasn't just, it wasn't just a place to come cut your hair. He called it Kings, Kings. I can't remember what it was, but his- It was and Cuts for King. Yeah, Cuts for King, yeah. So um, he understood the importance of that. He understood the importance of that name. He understood the importance of what he had to bring to his audience. And that's what I got from him. I got a cut and dry, honest biography short biography, but with a whole lot of depth and, me and meaning and love behind it. And we want to pass that on to our next generation. We don't want to have these frivolous conversations. We want to pass on some love and knowledge and let people know that we can, we're truly concerned about who we are and our next and passing that information on to the next generation. And I think he did a wonderful job of that. Love that, man. I appreciate that. What I tell people so many times for these King series, like the King series ain't gonna stop it, but God tells me to stop it. But like the video that every King has to watch is not gonna change. I don't care how big I get. I don't care what's gonna happen. If no King wanna watch the King series video with Uncle Eddie Ray Brown, then they ain't gonna make the King series because that King right there put legacy into the world. And he passed away last year. And guess what? I'm going to keep the mouth going. The widest King logo is where it is because my uncle loved, he loved the line. The lines are all different colors because no King is the same. But see that crown right there? That God connects us all together. So King, watching the video for next year. If you don't, if you tell Kyle Jack you don't want to watch the video, you won't be on the King series because leaving a legacy for my uncle and leaving a legacy for myself is way more important than a like a follow or anything else on social media. Way more than that. I'm God's child, no matter what. So King, with that one, before we go to chop out to rest in power to Uncle Ray, Ray Brown. Happy Father's Day to him in heaven right now. Happy Father's Day to all of y'all too. I hope y'all really enjoying this video. Once again, if you want to know more about Uncle Ray, Ray Brown, it's King Chapter 1, Series 15, looking at you like this. Go watch the video. You want to know more about King Chooks right here. Only thing you got to do is go down to the description below. Read the bio. After you read the bio, make sure you hit the hyperlinks. If you have any questions about anything, make sure you hit the hyperlinks and he'll respond back to you, no matter what. So with that being said, King, my next question is, what makes a good father? If you have to speak to a young brother right now, you got to tell him something. What makes a good father? Not being afraid to make mistakes but owning up to them. I love that. I, I you, truly love that. That's just part of life. I mean, um, there's really no such thing as a mistake, especially if you learn from it. That's why, that's why we have mistakes or what we call as mistakes. They're just instances in life where you say, I don't want to do that again. I've done it once not a good result. I don't want to pass that down to my child. No. Being true. Um, one of the things I did as a father, which was very hard for me because of the circumstances of me, of how I became a father and um, how I raised my, how I decided to raise my daughter. I had to be honest and true with her. 
I had to because that wasn't happening on the other side. And so I said, it's going to have to happen for me because when you get old enough to understand, you'll understand. But you understand from what I told you. And I'm not, I never threw mud or dirt on the other side. I didn't do that. I didn't believe in that. I said, you'll figure that out for yourself. But if I don't tell you the truth now, when you get older, you will have no respect for me. And you won't have any respect for yourself because all you'll know in your life is that you were lied to. And I didn't want to be a liar. I didn't. And I'm not. I love that, Mr. Chooks, because um, <clears throat> that's one thing in my life with my kids, you know, I get a lot of the dirt thrown on me because what I used to do back in the street life, get all that dirt thrown. But one thing about me, I don't throw it on them. The reason why I don't is because what's the point of me hurting another hurt individual? Like my kids are a blessing. They're my, they're going to be everything to me right now. So what I do is I make sure that I move forward. I make sure that I keep on just doing what I got to do. Because I can't, like you said, I can't control what the other side does. Only thing I can't control is this side. So even my little girls, I tell my little girls all the time. And y'all watching the video right now. I know my daughter's watching this video. That daddy tells you all the time. Little girls brush their teeth. Little girls wash their face. Little girls take showers every single day, no matter what. And I make sure I tell them that because <clears throat> the world will not always tell you that you're beautiful. I'm going to tell you you're beautiful because I love you. To my little boy, the world won't tell you you're handsome. I'm going to tell you you're handsome because you're mine. So I'm going to make sure I set you up on a plateau in life where you understand dad's love and the world loves two totally different things. But as long as you got me on your back, I'm your bodyguard for the rest of your life, no matter what. That's what it's about. <clears throat> Some of the juice. What we had last year was something called the motivational prayer. Then for the Queen's Prayer, for the Queen's series, God allowed me to have something called a Queen's Prayer. So this King's Prayer, we had a King's Prayer, but this is going to be something different because this is the Father's Day edition. So it's the King's Father's Day edition prayer. It's the Chooks, what I want you to do is I want you to pray for every king that's on the series. Every king that's watching this video, every king on Father's Day, I'm going to walk away. I want you to pray for your kings. Anything God puts in your heart for you to tell these kings is your time to just to go ahead and tell them. Once you tell them that, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to give you your last question of the day, but I want you to close out this whole entire video. This right here is the Father's Day edition of the King's Prayer. King Chooks, you got the mic. My older brother is a minister. Uh, he's 16 months older than me. And I watched my brother grow up. And that man, I trust him with everything, everything I do, because he was my and is my guiding light because we were so close um, in age and one year in school behind each other. He married my wife and I. So I would hope that all of you find someone like that. If I could pray for you, I'd ask you to find who you are, the true person of who you are. And once you find that person, pass that information down to the next generation because that prayer would only make you stronger. The world doesn't want us to pray. They don't want us to understand who we are. They don't want us to know how powerful we are. 
pray that you find that. Don't keep it to yourself. Understand that and give that energy to the rest of the world. That's my prayer. Because one thing I tell people on this, on this video, I tell them is they're right here. It's not a right or wrong way to pray. It's not. I mean, if Toots came to you and told you what he had on his heart, he told you, I hope that right there blesses your life. Hope that it encourages you to just go out there and be a better self. Because guess what? I'm going to tell you this right here. You can't judge the world if you look into the mirror and look and see who you are when you look in the mirror. If you don't look in the mirror, you can't judge nobody else. You can't. So that prayer right there was dedicated to all the kings right now. Hope you love it. Mr. Troops, I forgot, I got two, I got one more question. I got two more questions for you, not one. Now, my next question, this question doesn't come from this right here. It's a question that's dedicated, this is for me to you. This is my own personal question. I don't need to look at this. Mr. Troops, I want to know, as being a father right now, what is one, matter of fact, give me three gems you can give me right now to any upcoming father right now, I feel a man right now that already have kids. With your wisdom and your knowledge, everything you know right now, what is three gems you could give us right now? When you become a father, understand that you never stop learning. Never. It doesn't cut off. It never cuts off. But whatever it is you learn, Teach that to your child. Expose your child, number two, to the unusual, to the things that society says you're not supposed to suppose, expose your child to. And I'm not saying anything crazy or negative like that. Bring your child to a museum. Take your child to a play. Let your child meet great people. Tell your child, as you have, Kyle, that your child is great. Let them believe that they're great. Let them make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. It'll only make them stronger. And lastly, never, ever, ever be afraid to show your love to your child, ever. I love that, Mr. Toots, and I'm going to take them messages. Like, when you were speaking, I was just thinking, like, I take my kids a lot of places, but I don't never take them to a museum. You know what I'm saying? I don't never, like, take them to somewhere. We take them to the, I take them to the regular place we normally go, like, Chuck E. Cheese, Jumpy House, and everything like that. But doing stuff like that, that's what I don't do. So I know this year, like I told you, I'm coming to California. I'm coming. I might have to pack up this bus with all these six kids and drive down, and we all might have to come see you. So... I hope you got enough room for us because it's six of these Jacko kids. We all gonna come. But <laughs> I love it because um those are some gems that I know that every father needs to always understand and love. And King Troops, I'm about to give you this last question, but don't think about this. You're gonna close out this entire King series, Father Dad this video. And I want you to do it in your own style. So if you wanna do anything else you can, it's it's all on you. But I want you to give what is the father day what is the father day message to all the fathers. And before you close it out, I would love you to tell everybody in the video watching right now the art that's right behind you right there, why you created that art. So I want you to tell them why you created it first. And then I want you to give everybody a Father's Day message for 2022. So my name is Kyle Jacko. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. This has been the Father's Day edition of the King series. Hope you enjoyed this. Shout out again to all the fathers out there. Whether you have kids biologically, are you a stepfather, or you just taking care of kids in the community. Shout out to you. Thank you for being who you are. Keep on going out doing the right things. Don't do the wrong things. Do the right things. Because guess what? All the kings, the little kings and the little princesses are looking up to you right now and need your help. Some of the troops, go ahead and let us know why you created that art that's right behind you and then give all the fathers a Father's Day message. 
My name is Kyle Jacko. I pass the microphone and take my hat off to Mr. Tooks. Mr. Tooks, you got the mic. Thank you, Kyle. Well, um, let me move out the way. That piece there, it has two titles. At first, I titled it Love. I'm writing a book right now, and the book is titled Identity Theft, Creations from the Social Conscience, and it's one of the pieces in the book. And as I was writing the book, I decided to put this image in the book. And I said, love is such an incredibly powerful word, but I don't want to use it. So I started to think about my wife and I, and after being married for 20 years, we become one. And I think that's what marriage is about. Your right hand has to know what your left hand is doing in order for both hands to function correctly. And I never wanted to hold back anything from my wife. I figure if I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with this woman, I have to be completely honest with her. So this piece embodies my relationship with my wife and I. And as we grow older, I decided to change the title of the piece to one. We're no longer two people. We are now one. We're joined together. So her left hand is on my hip and my right hand or left hand is hugging her shoulder. And the closer we get together, you see these two heads, but they're becoming one now. We're becoming the same person now. And I think for me, that is what marriage and a relationship is all about. When you can become one, you become more powerful than anything and nothing can split you apart ever. So, that's what the, this piece means behind me. To say and close this out, first I wanna thank you very much, Kyle, for taking the time out to examine my work with true honesty because you've never met me before. And the important thing is, I think before you ever met me, you saw my work. There'll be a time where I'm not gonna be here, but what I created will outlast me for millennia. So what you leave in this earth is way more important than the presence that you are now. So make sure while you're here to leave something behind in a positive light that shows why you're here on this earth and what being alive meant to you, me. I are means to you, excuse me. I am very blessed to be this created person, but I've had to work and struggle and I still am. Insurmountable odds to become what I've become, but I've always believed that this is what I was here to do. And if you believe that, you can achieve that but you have to work. It's not gonna happen. We just happen. We live, in a, we live in a time where you can press a button and you can immediately get an answer. Leaving your legacy is not about that. Leaving your legacy is understanding your history. I use my last name, Chooks. I rarely use my first name, which is Michael. But I use my last name because Understanding my history, I found out what Chooks meant. Chooks is an African name, Nigerian name. It means most high man of God. It's a very common name in Nigeria. But my education allowed me to find out who I was. And not my education through school, my education because there's an inner education outside of school that has an energy inside of you that wants you to know who you really are. So when I found out that my last name was not, not a slave name 
are connected to a slave owner. That was my indigenous name. It gave me a great power. That is what education is about. Not getting a bunch of degrees and not knowing what to do with them. Go to school, learn, so you can better yourself and you can better others. That's what Chooks is all about. Pass your legacy down to the next person. It will only make them stronger. Tell them the truth, no matter how much it hurts. Tell them the truth. We are lied to far too much in this world by those who are supposed to be the ones that are governing us. Find the truth out for yourself. It's out there. I'm finding mine. I'm writing about it. And I'm passing that on to you. So that's part of my legacy. I'll say this one last thing. Great civilizations are remembered by two things. What they create and what they destroy. How do you want to be remembered?